Good evening, everyone. I'm Steve Call, Dean of Columbia's Graduate School of Journalism. Welcome to the 83rd Annual Mariah Moore's Cabot Prizes, honoring outstanding reporting in and about Latin America. Once again, we're gathering virtually to celebrate the careers of four outstanding journalists, the 2021 Mariah Moore's Cabot Medalists. I hope I'll see all of you here in New York next year at Columbia's Lowe Library, the traditional home of this ceremony. Meantime, we have four wonderful winners to celebrate, courageous journalists who have dedicated their careers to reporting on key parts of our hemisphere, from Brazil to Mexico and Haiti and beyond. Let me welcome tonight's winners. From Brazil, Eliane Broom, an author, investigative reporter, and columnist based in the Amazon rainforest. From Mexico, Adela Navarro Bello, editor of Zeta Magazine in Tijuana. Based in Mexico from the U.S., Mary Beth Sheridan, a reporter with the Washington Post. And based in the U.S., but from Brazil, Adriana Zabrowskis, a photojournalist who's just back from assignment in Haiti. Congratulations to all of the 2021 Cabot medalists. We will also give two special citations this evening. The first to Contra Corriente, a digital news site in Honduras. And the second posthumous citation is for Mexican reporter Regina Martinez Perez and the Cartel Project. I'd also like to recognize some special people who are here with us tonight. First, welcome as always to the Cabot family. Your leadership and continued support enables us to pay tribute to the best reporting about the Americas and to hold that reporting up as a model of excellence for other journalists and the public. Next, I'd like to welcome past Cabot medalists as well as members of the Cabot board, a well-known group of scholars and journalists who contribute their time and expertise to choose our winners every year. We appreciate your many contributions. I'd also like to acknowledge our journalism school students in attendance, especially our international students and this year's four Cabot scholars who hail from Brazil and Mexico. And thank you to our Professional Prizes team for administering these awards and producing tonight's ceremony. Abby Wright, Lisa Cohen, and their team do an amazing job every year. Now let's watch a short video that will introduce us to the journalism uh, and to the history of the Cabot Prizes. I am truly honored to be receiving the Mariah Morris Cabot Prize tonight. I'm so moved and so emotional. For me, this is more difficult than to, to be in a war zone. I like to thank my editors, the good and the bad ones. Muchas gracias y muchas gracias a todos. I'm very happy to be involved with the Maria Moore's Cabot Prize to recognize excellent journalism work that helps with the understanding among the Americas, especially the United States and Latin America. It's not a prize for one single project. It's a, it's a prize that celebrates a whole career. Columbia University administers the prize and has done so since the very beginning in 1938. This is the oldest international journalism prize in the world. It started because my grandfather, John Moores Cabot, saw these extraordinary journalists and saw the bravery and the talent of these folks and wanted a way of recognizing their extraordinary talents. It is important to note that this prize is not for courageous journalists. This prize is for excellent journalists. But there is a correlation, unfortunately, in Latin America between being excellent in investigative journalism and the fact that you have courage to put yourself uh, in harm's way. And so to do independent journalism and extraordinary good journalism and really tell the whole story and what's happening takes a lot of courage. Some of the journalists have been harassed, others have been attacked. They have faced exile, assassination. Javier Valdez won a cabinet in 2011 and was then assassinated in 2017.
This prize has never been so important in its history because it sends a signal to the governments who are against press freedom that there is an international eye that is sympathetic to journalists who are doing their job. And not only those press freedom threats are coming from Latin America, but is also very present here. We want to recognize that the risks they take and the things that they are writing about, broadcasting about, photographing, have impact and do contribute to the greater good of understanding our Americas. Fear is contagious as much as courage. We must keep fighting back to hold the powerful accountable. To the journalists that lost their lives for it, and to the journalists that lived their lives for it, salut. In the years since we were last together for these awards, we've all gone through another challenging time. Uh, as the pandemic has intensified across much of the Americas, journalists have risen to the moment, demonstrating again and again in countries like Brazil and Colombia the vital importance of independent reporting about matters of public health and also about government performance and accountability. I wish we were through all of this and could put it behind us, but I think we all know that we've got a lot of work left to do. We have to do this even as we battle persistent organized misinformation and propaganda on many of the channels that influence our publics. We had a lively panel discussion earlier with our four winners, moderated by my colleague and Cabot board member, Elena Cabral. Thank you, Elena, for doing that. And now to tonight's program. Please welcome the chair of the Cabot jury, Rosenthal Alves. Originally from Brazil, Rosenthal spent most of three decades as a reporter and a foreign correspondent he moved to Austin in 1996 to become the founder and director of the Knight Center for Journalism in the Americas at the University of Texas at Austin. And he won a Cabot Prize in 2016. Welcome, Rosenthal. Welcome to the Maria Morris Cabot Prizes ceremony. I have the honor to chair the, the Cabot Prizes Board, formed by dis distinguished journalists and scholars from the Americas. Since 1938, the Maria Morse Cabot Prizes has recognized journalists who contribute to the inter-American understanding through the excellence of their work in the Western Hemisphere. In the long history, of the oldest international journalism award in the world, 2021 is the first year that all prizes go to women journalists. We, the jury, were more than delighted by the end of our deliberations when we realized that only women journalists had emerged from all the great candidates we considered. Recently, as I was preparing for this ceremony, I discovered another coincidence. This is the 80th anniversary of the first Cabot Medal given to a woman. In the fall of 1941, Brazilian journalist Silvia de Bittencourt was among the recipients of the gold medal along with her husband, Paulo Bittencourt, the publisher of Rio de Janeiro's newspaper, Correio da Manhã, where she published a daily column under the pen name of Majoy. Three years later, in 1944, Majoy became the first female Brazilian war correspondent. She covered the Brazilian troops who fought the Germans in Italy, along with the American army during the World War II. So, Let's remember Majoy tonight as we get ready to re recognize a group of outstanding women journalists of our time in the Americas. Now, it's my privilege to introduce the president of Columbia University who will preside over the Cabot Prizes ceremony this evening. 
He is a member of the Columbia Law School faculty and one of the country's foremost First Amendment scholars. He comes from a family of journalists and is a well-known defender of press freedom. Please welcome President Lee C. Bollinger. It is a great honor to be a part of this annual ceremony honoring journalists in the Americas for their courageous and urgently necessary work. I'd like to begin to recognize the Cabot family who endowed this prize, as well as the Cabot board members who worked tirelessly every year to select the honorees. I'd also like to acknowledge Steve Cole, Dean of the Columbia Journalism School. We're here to recognize the contributions of four exceptional journalists with Cabot Prizes and to honor the work of two additional outlets with special citations. All have devoted themselves to covering complex and enormously consequential stories that too often go unnoticed or underreported. They do this work under conditions that are often difficult and even dangerous. According to the Committee to Protect Journalists, the number of journalists killed in reprisal for their reporting has more than doubled in the last year. Mexico continues to be the most dangerous nation in the Western Hemisphere for journalists. There, at least four journalists were killed in retaliation for their reporting in 2020, including the journalist in Iguala, who was under state protection and with a bodyguard at the time of his murder. Reporters in the United States have also endured extremely troubling harassment, violence, and even arrests for covering racial justice protests. These include incidents of police shoving, handcuffing, and using non-lethal ammunition. A significant number of journalists continue to face charges. I say all of this to underscore how high the stakes are and how dedicated these reporters and photographers are to doing their jobs. They deserve our admiration and our thanks. Now to the presentation of tonight's awards. Over the course of her 30-year career, Eliane Broom has devoted herself to covering issues related to human rights and social justice. With threats against the Amazon rainforest and its indigenous peoples on the rise, she decided to move to a town in the heart of the Amazon at personal risk to get closer to the story. This is just one example of her dedication to coverage of the Amazon and of Brazil's social and environmental issues. Prolific and tireless, Broom has published her stories and opinion columns globally. Since 2013, she has written a column for Spain's El País. She is also the author of seven books and director or co-director of four documentaries. Her powerful recent coverage of the devastating consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic has underscored her status as one of the most respected voices in Brazilian journalism. Eliane Broom literally moved from uh, southern Brazil to a city in the heart of the Amazon where she became very close to the indigenous peoples, the ribeirinhos that she respect and love, but also at risk because she even closer to the corrupt uh, politicians, illegal miners, timber uh, extractors, and their gangsters and assassins who are, are ruthless. Eliane's columns are, are, are often poignant and, and emotional. You can literally cry uh, reading some of her heartbreaking descriptions and stories that, that she goes with a lot of, of empathy and investigate on the ground. Her political positions are very tough, uh, very hard and very clear, direct. But what strikes me is that uh, the opinions are based on facts and, and original and meticulous investigations. Eliane Broom, for your courage and your commitment, the trustees of Columbia University are honored to present you with the Mariah Moores Cabot Gold Medal. Boa noite.
aprendi com os povos da floresta amazônica que a alegria é um instrumento de resistência. Nesse momento de tantas trevas no Brasil e no mundo, ter meu trabalho e meu percurso reconhecidos pelo prêmio Maria Marscabut me dá imensa alegria, ampliada por estar ao lado dessas três mulheres maravilhosas. Me sinto muito, muito honrada. Muito obrigada à Universidade de Colômbia e a todos os envolvidos nesse prêmio que tem fortalecido o jornalismo global. Como jornalista, escolhi, escolhi contar daqueles que, pelas iniquidades raciais, sociais, de gênero e também de espécie, enfrentam a violência da invisibilidade. Escolhi contar daqueles que resistem para poder existir. Penso que toda a vida é singular e extraordinária. Penso que não existem vidas comuns, sólidos, domesticados. E nós, jornalistas, somos aqueles que precisam resistir à domesticação do olhar. Essa escolha me levou a me mudar da maior cidade do Brasil, São Paulo, para a cidade mais violenta da Amazônia, Altamira. Entendo que no momento em que parte da espécie humana se converteu numa força de destruição capaz de alterar o clima do planeta, é preciso confrontar o conceito do que é centro e do que é periferia. É necessário compreender que os suportes naturais de vida, como os oceanos e as florestas tropicais, são os verdadeiros centros desse mundo. Por isso, quatro anos atrás, deixei o maior centro no sentido convencional para habitar um dos centros do mundo nessa nova perspectiva. E é daqui, da Amazônia, centro do mundo, que falo com vocês hoje. E por falar desde a Amazônia, tenho a responsabilidade ética de dizer a vocês que Bolsonaro não é uma ameaça apenas para o Brasil. Bolsonaro é uma ameaça para o planeta. Pesquisas recentes já mostraram que partes da maior floresta tropical do mundo já emitem mais carbono do que absorvem. Outras pesquisas já provaram que grande parte dos 600 mil mortos por Covid-19 no Brasil poderiam ter sido salvos, poupados, se Bolsonaro tivesse tomado medidas de prevenção e aceitado as vacinas quando elas foram oferecidas. Eu preciso dizer ainda a vocês que nesse momento a fome se alastra pelo Brasil e que muitos crianças e adultos se mantêm vivos, fervendo os ossos que antes eram destinados para os cachorros. Porém, Bolsonaro, Trump e outros não são causas, mas sintoma. É com suas causas que teremos que lidar por muito mais tempo, em pleno colapso climático agravado por decisões de homens como eles. Responderemos fazendo mais reportagem, com respeito aos fatos e com a coragem de contá-los. Para enfrentar os tempos duros que ainda virão, nós jornalistas teremos que ser melhores do que somos. Muito obrigada. As a reporter and editor of the weekly magazine Zeta, Adela Navarro Bayo has dedicated herself to holding authorities accountable and exposing corruption and complicity, especially as it relates to the drug cartels along the U.S.-Mexico border. Nominated by the Zeta staff for her courage and leadership, Navarro is celebrated for the critical and independent stances she takes on important issues. For their work, she and her staff have been the targets of attacks, intimidation, and even extreme violence. In 1988, Zeta co-founder Hector Felix Miranda was assassinated, and another co-founder survived an assassination attempt in 1997. In 2004, a staff member of Zeta was killed. The magazine is still targeted with attacks by Baja California state governments. Under her leadership, Zeta continues to cover corruption, abuses of power, and now the consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic. Imagine a job description. So somebody comes and says, we would like you to come and lead a team of journalists in one of the most difficult, interesting, controversial border cities in Mexico. The publication that she leads has one of the greatest traditions of independent journalism in Mexico. It's on the one hand a mid-sized city paper, SIPA. On the other hand, it has been the 
ground zero for people trying to figure out what's really happening along the border, what's really happening with the cartels. This is a time when a lot of voices are being silenced, where newsrooms have been silenced out of fear. And so they just quit publishing names and news about some groups. One of the things that makes Adela's job especially difficult is there is no one to back her. She's equally unpopular with the cartels as she is with the state government and sometimes the national government. And this is a period where the president has used the podium in the presidential palace to denounce journalists. And Adela hasn't backed down. Her team has not backed down. The tradition of SETA of naming and showing people what is happening continues. And she epitomizes that wonderful phrase, nevertheless, she persisted. For her courage and her contributions to understanding the U.S.-Mexico border, the trustees of Columbia University are proud to honor Adela Navarro Bayo with the Mariah Moore's Cabot Gold Medal. Good evening to all of those who are listening and tuning in. I heartfelt thank you to the Columbia University, to its School of Journalism and the faculty, and to the journalists and professors that were members of the jury during the 2021 edition of the Maria Murskabot Award. This is an announcement that honors me. I humbly accept it, and I share this with all my Mexican colleagues, particularly those who work in Semanario Zeta. Because of the pandemic that has been ongoing around the world since the end of 2019, and that has set social distancing and strict health measures, it is not possible for me to be today at Columbia University. But you have given me the opportunity to receive these recognitions in the offices of Semanario Zeta, founded in 1980, and thus pay tribute to its founders. Many thank you to them and to you for this honor, which this year was also granted to three other female journalists, each of them exceptional. Journalism thrives in times of darkness and doom. Today, more than ever, Freedom of expression is at risk and censorship is an undeniable challenge. According to Reporters Without Borders, in the past 10 years, 937 journalists have been gunned down around the world. Mexico, my country, is listed as one of the most dangerous for its society in journalism. In the last two years alone, 46 journalists have been killed according to federal government data. Currently, around the world, populist governments threaten freedom of expression. In Mexico, journalists and the media are constantly attacked by our governments. They survive despite the threat of organized crime and drug trafficking. In a world increasingly geared towards transparency, countries like ours remain opaque with democratically elected governments that quickly develop dictatorial overtones and seek to dominate the public agenda, manipulate society, and abuse their power. And they misuse social networks, which are turned into an abyss of false information in order to influence public opinion against investigative journalism. Investigative journalists, with their fundamental role in a democracy, have become a counterweight, counterweight to political regimes, sometimes with little consequences, exile and displacement due to the intolerance of those who hold power. As journalists, we seek to contribute to building a free society, we write and publish to ensure a world without censorship, in which we can all raise our voice and express our opinion without be, being assassinated, harassed, abducted, or imprisoned. Investigative journalists defend victims of abuse with truthful information. We, we give space to diverse ideas. We investigate in order to represent all voices. We investigate journalists in a world of darkness, opacity, and impunity, 
want and have to exercise freedom of expression. Defend those who also want to exercise it and fight for the public's right to know. We demand justice for the families of murderer journalists and guarantees of safety for those who through the world at this moment report and document new stories with courage and commitment. What a noble and transcendental profession we proudly share. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next Cabot medalist, Mary Beth Sheridan, has had a remarkable career spanning nearly three decades at the Associated Press, the Miami Herald, the Los Angeles Times, and the Washington Post. In 2018, she decided to leave her job as deputy foreign editor at the Washington Post to return to reporting for the paper in Mexico and Central America. Sheridan has used her extensive experience to tell nuanced stories that help explain the region in masterful narrative prose. She has, for example, written about the appeal of Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, as well as the concerns about his leadership at a moment when many countries in Latin America are grappling with human rights violations, attacks on the press, corruption, and the disappearances of tens of thousands of people. Sheraton has written about these issues not just in Mexico, but in other countries like El Salvador, Nicaragua, Venezuela, and Colombia. Mary Beth Sheridan has had a long history in journalism, from the Associated Press to the Miami Herald to the LA Times to the Washington Post, where she reached sort of the pinnacle of her field, you know, in a very prestigious job as deputy foreign editor. She left that job to move back to Mexico City and cover Mexico and the region. You know, not a lot of people do that, and I think it says a lot about her commitment Mary Beth just also happens to have that uncommon sense of dedication to covering both the breaking news and what we refer to as enterprise news, the stories that you can't find anywhere else, the analysis that you can't find anywhere else. She's not someone to follow the pack, but someone to tell stories in a dispassionate way, but that helps readers make up their own minds about how to feel about what's happening in these countries. It's a really complicated matter, and only somebody who knows the region, the people, the culture, the language can do that level of work. But I think that she cares deeply about getting it right. For her vivid storytelling about Latin America, the trustees of Columbia University are proud to honor Mary Beth Sheridan with the Mariah Moore's Cabot Gold Medal. A few months ago, I went to write a story about violence in the run-up to the Mexican midterm elections. I decided to focus on the city of Tosco, about three hours outside Mexico City. I hadn't been there in years, but I remembered the city for its Spanish colonial architecture, its famous silver mines, its beautiful jewelry. I was stunned to find that today, the city is penetrated by organized crime. Local journalists told me it was too dangerous to write about their power. And indeed, a reporter was assassinated a few years ago outside his home in the city. A 500-year-old city, a place with such a proud legacy, was unable to write its current history. I was thinking about that as I reflected on the importance of the Mariah Moore's Cabot Award. The Americas are bound together ever more by commerce, migration, travel, and yet it's a region, ironically, often so unknown to itself. Think of the major issues the extraordinary control of organized crime. Such a hard story to document. Political systems that have been transformed with democracy making huge strides, yet clearly it hasn't been the solution many imagined. We've repeatedly been surprised by the rise of populists. Migration, it's become a mass systemic phenomenon, yet many people in the United States still can't grasp why migrants are leaving their homes. That's why reporting in the Americas is so important today. As much as ever, we need journalists who have the bravery and the commitment to explain the profound changes going on. There's some extraordinary journalists doing this today, like Adela Navarro, Eliana Brum, and Adriana Zabrauskas. In some ways, there's never been a better time to be a reporter in Latin America. 
The issues are fascinating. The internet carries our stories far and wide. Yet it's difficult to tell these vital stories. In part, that's due to danger. Um, scores of journalists have been killed in the Americas in the past decade. These are also often highly complex stories, far more so than the polarized political rhetoric would suggest. It helps to have time, an open mind, and editors who support excellence. I'd like to thank my own editors during the time I've covered the region, at the Miami Herald, the Los Angeles Times, and the Washington Post, for their guidance and ambition. I'd like to thank the Cabot Board and everyone at Columbia University involved in the prize for encouraging great journalism in the region. I extend a profound thank you to my mother. She, my late father, and my family have been such a source of strength. Finally, I want to express my gratitude to all those people who have taken the time and taken the risk to tell their stories, to help us write the daily history of the Americas in the 21st century. Thank you. Our final Cabot Medal this evening goes to Adriana Zebrauskas. She is a US-based Brazilian photojournalist admired for her intimate and empathetic portraits of people in incredibly difficult situations. Published by major media across the region, her photographs from South America, Mexico, and the U.S.-Mexico border are rich in color and humanity. They include Brazilian mothers and babies born with Zika and the families of the 43 students murdered in Iguala, Mexico. Following a year-long assignment photographing the family of one of the victims, she launched, launched a broader project called Family Matters. For it, she takes iPhone portraits of families in rural Guerrero State and makes prints for villagers who want them. The hallmark of Adriana Zebrowska's work, she gets very close to people who are in the most extreme circumstances of poverty and distress, and she dignifies them with her images. It's something that's really very difficult to do. We see it very rarely in photography, and Adriana has really mastered that skill. I think of the work that she did with the mothers of the Zika babies in Brazil. These were in many cases, very young mothers whose babies were doomed by a disease to lives of pain and disability. And yet Adriana captured the absolute love and commitment that these mothers had to these children. She took on the really difficult task of following the families who lost their children, their, who were students, in Ayotzinapa. And she not only succeeded in capturing the sense of betrayal and the sorrow of these families, but used her iPhone to make portraits of families. And then she gave the, those portraits back, part of a, a really dignified historical record of the suffering and the want, but also of the resistance and the resilience of the people in that community. Her work is really extraordinary to the degree that it really brings you right to these uh, people in distress and gives them their full measure of humanity. Adriana Zebrauskas, for an outstanding career and for furthering inter-American understanding, the trustees of Columbia University are honored to present you with the Mariah Moore's Cabot Gold Medal. Good evening, everyone. It's a huge honor for me to be here tonight. Thank you, Jean, Steve, Cole, and everyone at the Mariah Moore's Cabot Board for recognizing photojournalism and my work this year. I have followed your brilliant careers, and the stories you told have inspired me to become a better journalist and storyteller. So thank you. I would also like to thank my editors. Thank you for your support and trust along the way. Without you, I could not be here. I started my career at Folha de São Paulo, where I had the opportunity to work alongside and learn from the best journalists in the field, the best school I could have possibly had, and one that defined my views on the high standards of journalistic practice and ethics. From São Paulo, my path led me to Mexico, where for more than 10 years I witnessed and photographed stories of unbelievable pain and loss, but also of 
the relentless resilience and dignity in the face of the most atrocious situations. And it is with dignity that I strive to present and portray the people I photograph. Be it an earthquake survivor in Haiti, a sleep-deprived mother trying to cope with their baby born with the Zika virus, or a family trying to reconnect with their daughter and sister that disappeared for many years in the Navajo Nation. The Uruguayan journalist Eduardo Galeano wants to find in an interview his work intentions, and I borrow his words. He said, being able to look at what is not looked at, but deserves to be. The small, the minuscule things of the anonymous people, this micro world where I believe comes from the greatness of the universe. To contemplate this universe and at the same time the great mysteries of life, the mystery of human pain, but also the sometimes inexplicable humane perseverance to fight for a world that is home for many and not just a few or hell for the majority. Thank you very much. Muito obrigada. Gracias. In addition to the four medalists, this year the Cabot Jury also selected two 2021 special citation recipients that honor courageous reporting. The first goes to Rahina Martinez Perez and the Cartel Project. For more than 30 years, including her last 12, with the weekly Proceso, Martinez devoted herself to the search for truth. It was a calling that led her to investigate how politicians and organized crime interests colluded in Veracruz, Mexico. She paid for her work with her life. She was assassinated in 2012. A team of reporters from Mexico, Europe, and the U.S. picked up where Martinez left off. Eight years later, they formed the Cartel Project and published stories in 20 countries, inspiring journalists all over the region and the world. Regina Martinez is a paradoxical figure. Her nickname was Shorty, and boy was she tall, and boy did she leave a long shadow. This is a journalist who worked for one of Mexico's most distinguished political magazines, Proceso, and the cartels warned her, told her she would be killed, and it didn't matter to her. She followed through on a story in one of the most violent places in Mexico, in Veracruz. The cartels or someone followed through and killed her, and they thought by doing that they would silence her. Twelve years after her death, her memory her persistence, her ability to uncover extreme cartel violence and government complicity on it lives on in the form of the cartel project. It's ironic that uh, La Chaparrita, the little one, has now become a, uh, a gigantic figure. In these difficult times when independent journalism is under attack in Mexico, many other countries in the Americas, the trustees of Columbia University honor Regina Martinez Perez and the Cartel Project with the 2021 Mariah Moores Cabot Special Citation as an enduring example of resistance and defiance in the face of adversity, pain, and death. Thank you very much. We are truly honored to receive the Mariah Moores Cabot Prize for the Cartel Project. This prize is a very important recognition of the work of Regina Martinez, a Mexican journalist who was assassinated in 2012 in Veracruz. She was investigating corruption, corrupted politicians and the links between governors and cartels. So we really are thanking you for this prize. And thank you because that's also a great award for all the partners who did work on the Cartel Project. That's a great recognition as well for collaborative journalism. The, the mission of Forbidden Stories is to make sure that people get access to the very important stories journalists have been killed for and, and send a, a powerful signal that even if you try to kill the messenger, you will never kill the message. So thank you again so much. The second special citation winner is the news website from Honduras, Contra Corriente. This digital publication has emerged in Honduras, a Central American country ravaged by narco corruption, COVID-19, and back-to-back -back hurricanes, to chronicle the impact of these threats on the nation's citizens. Guided by Jennifer Avila, its editor and development director, Catherine Calderon, the publication was founded in 2017 and has grown into a dynamic, 
multimedia website providing lucid factual coverage of the country's troubles. From drug trafficking and criminal violence to environmental destruction and attacks on indigenous rights, Contra Corriente probes the issues with well-honed reporting holding the government to account despite grave risks to their journalists. I was especially enthusiastic about this special citation for Contra Corriente in Honduras. Honduras in particular was just a journalism desert. There was no tradition of quality journalism at all. And out of that void, these two young women, Jennifer Avila and Katy Calderon, created this extraordinary website. And they work in multimedia and they uh, practice very high quality journalism. They do investigative journalism. They do reports on government policy. Uh, they have been following the out-migration, this massive out-migration of Hondurans uh, who have uh, taken that terribly dangerous trip across Mexico to come to the United States border. And they've done that under more or less continuous threat from the authorities that they'll be shut down, that their journalism is incorrect. And at the same time, they have taken it on themselves to train a new generation of journalists in Honduras. And so this citation really rewards that effort. To the team of Contra Corriente for their invaluable, intrepid reporting in a time of great crisis for Honduras, the trustees of Columbia University are proud to award a 2021 Mariah Moores Cabot special citation. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Avila, I'm Editor-in-Chief and the founder of Contra Corriente, and I'm speaking for my team of journalists and different professionals that make Contra Corriente a news media outlet with a very important voice in Honduras. Now I'm speaking to thank the Maria Moore's Cabot jury this year to, to give us a special and honor mention in their 2021 edition. For us, it's a big responsibility to receive this mention, the responsibility to strengthen journalism as a tool for citizens in a very, living in a very critical uh, context right now, a very critical context around democracy because central, in Central America we're living author, autocratic governments, violence, and a lot of conflicts that we're covering and that we're trying to explain and uh, journalism is a tool for citizens. And it is also a tool for people, for a new generation of, of citizens to, to speak out of what's happening in this country. Andres is not um, a country well known, and it's really new speaking about investigative journalism or in-depth journalism. So we have the big responsibility now to have the voice and to, and to strengthen this new, new generation of journalists and to strengthen the investigative journalism we are creating in this small country. Andres has been in a long, long silent time and now that silence is breaking out with new voices and that, that is why we're very grateful for being mentioned in the Maria Murskabot uh, edition of 2021 because we think this gives us energy and this gives us also a big background to continue in this, in this work of in-depth journalism to tell what's happening in Honduras. We also get a lot of inspiration uh, with all these women journalists that are also being awarded tonight and all these projects leaded by women working in independent journalism and also facing all the risks. We know that a lot of journalists, women journalists have been under attack and also had been murdered because of this work and we're inspired in their, in their work and also we are 
always facing these risks they are also facing. So thank you to the Maria Morskava jury and we hope this give a new message to Andreas, new generation of journalists. Thank you for joining us this evening. Congratulations to all of the 2021 Mariah Morris Cabot Prize winners. Good night.